Nature can be psychologically uncomfortable. It can also be physically uncomfortable. <sighs> so we're going into the ninth hour straight of rain. How you doing over there, Jason? This is our setup for last night. It got down to 14 degrees. Suck in. <laughs> and it can be one of the most beautiful and fulfilling aspects of life. The more you're prepared for nature with equipment, knowledge, and skills, the more you can enjoy it without being uncomfortable. In the U.S., you're 74 times more likely to be killed by an insect than a bear and 14 times more likely to be killed by a dog than any other predator. In fact, you're far more likely to die from falling, drowning, or exposure than an animal attack or even struck by lightning. You're a million times more likely to be assaulted by a person than an animal. Feeling safe yet? But this video is about protecting your camp from animals. So if you're somewhere in the U.S. where you have to worry about people, well, your best bet is just tip number one, avoid detection. All the large North American predators have a great sense of smell. You can cook and eat just fine, but be sure to clean up really well. I might even recommend changing your clothes that you ate in before going to bed if you're in pretty heavy predator country. Put your food and hygiene items in an airtight bag and hang it at least 10 feet high in a tree, and if you can, at least four feet from the trunk. If you're hanging multiple packs or you just have a really heavy pack, it's sometimes easier to use webbing because as you pull that up, a rope will bind a lot more on the bark. Number two, use the natural landscape. Animals need water just as much as we do. If you try and set up at least 100 yards from any water source, you'll probably avoid some unwanted encounters. Animals are like us. They try and find the easiest way around things, so use heavy brush to your advantage. Use a property fence or cliff face to force an animal to go around your camp but you gotta be careful because sometimes it can force an animal right through your camp. Avoid game trails. That's where the vegetation is kind of worn down and chances are if you just made your way through a thick part of the brush, well, a large animal is gonna use it the same way. Number three, you can use sticks to add to the natural barriers that are around you. These sticks won't stop an animal, certainly, but if you give it enough reasons not to investigate, it'll choose to look elsewhere. Maybe it'll make enough noise to wake you up. Number four, you can use ropes or paracord to weave a barrier. Again, this isn't to stop a predator, but just to make your camp too hard to investigate. There's something called the National Outdoor Leadership School, and they did a study and found that bears are even deterred by electric fences that aren't even charged. Just if there's some kind of physical barrier there, they're a lot less interested. And if you don't have any smells in your camp, then they won't be interested. Number five, you can use an electric fence. This is a method often used in Alaska to protect bush planes. And there's a lot of commercial brands out there that are lightweight, but they're really expensive. And honestly, you can just buy an energizer alone for much less. Add to that some fiberglass poles and some poly wire. You can get exactly the same setup for a lot less money. These fences usually stay charged for about three weeks on just two D cell batteries. Just make sure the wire isn't touching any grass, wood, or debris. And you can check out the National Outdoor Leadership School study in this link below. Number six, get a tripwire alarm. Perimeter alarms are usually lightweight. They're not too expensive and you can use either a string or an infrared beam. They're really loud and they'll definitely wake you up if anything comes close to your camp. Number seven, fire. Fire has been used as a predator deterrent for centuries. Animals are unlikely to approach a fire if it's being attended. In some extreme cases, you can even move your fire around to three different spots, making a triangle around your camp. Since this really increases your chance of starting a forest fire, I don't recommend this at all unless it's really a true emergency. Number eight, get a dog. This method of protection has some controversy. There have been some instances where a dog has agitated a predator, and then once it gets chased, the dog runs back to the owner, and then, of course, the owner gets attacked by the predator. In my opinion, I think the benefits outweigh the risks. They have a great sense of hearing and a great sense of smell. A lot of times they can warn you of danger before you even know it exists. If you do camp with a dog, I would make sure it's either leashed or has a really good temperament and is under strict voice control. I can also tell you from experience, sometimes having a dog can actually make you more uncomfortable. Things like deer, 
or squirrels that ordinarily might go unnoticed by you, your dog's going to be perking up at every little sound and looking in that direction. Number nine, aside from having an existing structure already there, you're the only thing that can actually stop a predator attack. Even if you don't have a lot of experience in the woods, you got to always think of yourself as an apex predator because that's what we are. We're intelligent, resourceful, and very dangerous, and most animals will avoid us just for that fact. I'm a big advocate for having a plan in place to protect yourself, no matter what that is. Bear spray is a great defense. Firearms can also be very effective if they're in experienced hands. Hey, you could even go full on avatar style and carve yourself a spear. There's plenty of sticks out there, or have a pile of rocks you can throw. Just don't leave yourself with nothing. I've done that before and it makes for a really long night. Till next time, this is Derek reminding you, you're working too hard. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, subscribe and tell me to make more.